Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of San Diego Zoo Kids Corner. Roberta, you ready to get the show on the road? Of course I'm ready. I look great today, and you're here, and so is Phoebe. Look, there she is. Hi, Phoebe. Oh my, what in the world was that? Roberta, this is so exciting. Phoebe just deposited some droppings on your head. <laughs> a little dropping? You mean bird poop? Oh, yuck! We definitely have different ideas on how to define the word exciting, Dr. Z. This is not exciting. This is gross! No, no, wait, Roberta. Where are you going? Roberta, you can't leave now. This is so exciting. Kids, you've got to be jealous of Roberta when she comes. Roberta, we're all jealous of you. Stop laughing. No laughing. At... Okay, it's funny, but stop laughing. Roberta, come back. In some cultures, this is considered lucky. <laughs> Today's show is going to be full of excrement. I, I mean, excitement. I am laser fecal on fun. Ooh, sorry, I'm laser focused on fun. I cannot waste. Oh, I'm having a whole lot of vowel movements today. Sorry about that. I cannot wait to share my tales and adventures with you. So pull up a stool because we're about to bring the poo to you. I didn't get a face full of zebra droppings. You're quite right, Roberta. Poop comes in all different sizes and shapes and smells depending on the animal and what they eat. But what goes in must come out. And there's no waste in waste, Roberta. Poop is such a valuable resource in the animal kingdom. I guess, Dr. Z. I know I'm just a poop novice compared to all of your poop credentials. So, tell me. What exactly makes poop so valuable in the animal kingdom? What use does poop have besides coming out of backsides? Isn't it called waste for a reason? I have been awarded the Nobel Poop Prize three years in a row, and I can proudly say I am a certified scatologist or poopologist, Roberta. Today, you and our friends are going to learn about how multifaceted feces can be. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Hmm. Okay, Dr. Pooh Little. Oops! <laughs> I mean, Zoo Little. You seem to have all the qualifications there. Why don't you share some nuggets of knowledge with us and host a little poop trivia? That's a great idea, Roberta. And I do indeed want to be called Dr. Pooh Little. It's trivia time. And we are going to dive deeper into some poop. Let's see if you get these answers right. Shout them out if you know the answer. Which animal disguises itself to look like bird poop to avoid being attacked? Is it A, the ghost crab, B, an orb weaver, or C, the cabbage moth? If you said orb weaver, that's B, and you are absolutely correct. Scientists believe that the Cyclosa jinga, a type of orb weaver spider, has developed the ultimate disguise. Its silver body combined with a white circular decoration on its web gives it the uncanny resemblance to being bird droppings. This certainly is a great technique to avoid being attacked by predatory wasps. Question number two. Which animal builds a fortress of poop to protect its young? Is it A, the Fijian crested iguana? B, the red kangaroo, or C, the black lark? If you guess C, the black lark, you're absolutely correct. These birds use dung of herbivores, like cattle, to build a fortress around their nests. But it's not to hide the nests, it's actually a genius way to minimize trampling hazards. You see, the larks build their nests on the ground, which could put their youngs in harm's way. But the cattle are less likely to stand on their own dung, so protecting their nests with dung is the way to go. 
Okay, third question, and this one's guaranteed to make you squirm. Which animal eats cow poop to enhance its features? Is it A, the Egyptian vulture, B, the echidna, or C, the pit viper? If you said A, the Egyptian vulture, you're correct. Believe it or not, these birds eat yellow cow poop to enhance the color of their yellow beaks and faces. This gives them an advantage when it comes time for finding a partner. The brighter and more robust the yellow hue, the more attractive they are to their mates. Wow, Dr. Z, this is all news to me. I guess I never really stopped to think about how useful poop is in the animal kingdom. Sounds like some animals actually depend on poop for survival. You're quite right, Roberta. Poop can be very useful in the animal kingdom. In fact, some animals use poop to mark their territory. Here is Olivia to give you the poop scoop on that one. What animal has teeth like a rodent, a hard cartilage backside, and produces square-shaped poos? Is it a badger? Is it a squirrel? I know, it's a koala. Not quite. I'll give you some more clues. So this animal lives right here in Australia. It's got four stumpy little legs, long, strong claws for digging, and its closest living relative is the koala. It's a wombat! Yes, a wombat. One of my favourite animals for so many reasons. Now let's visit the resident wombat here at Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary to break down a few of those clues. Check out those teeth, they're almost rodent-like. They are perfectly designed to rip into some vegetation, bite through roots, or chew through some corn. From the teeth to the backside, these wombat's bottoms are tough, and I mean super tough. They're made of hard cartilage, and that's a pretty handy adaptation to have. So why on earth does a wombat need a hard bottom? Well, when a wombat is escaping a predator, it runs straight into its burrow and blocks the burrow entrance with its hard backside, kind of like a brick wall. Believe it or not, but these guys can give Usain Bolt a run for his money. In short bursts, they can actually run up to 40 k's an hour. Clearly, today's walk is more about leisure than speed. Let's get to the coolest fact already. Wombats do square-shaped poos. What's that all about? A wombat's eyesight isn't great, but they do have an excellent sense of smell. So one of the ways that they identify each other's whereabouts is by sniffing strategically laid poos at the entrance of their burrows. Round, circular poos would simply roll away but cubic-shaped poos stay exactly where the wombat needs them. While they may look like your average, everyday, adorable Aussie animal, these mighty mammals are full of surprises and unique adaptations. How amazing that wombats can identify each other just by the smell of the poop outside their burrow. It's like a pile of little smelly name tags. And using that square shape to keep the poop from rolling away is so clever! It's almost as if those cube shapes were perfectly sculpted by a professional artist. You're absolutely correct, Roberta. They are perfectly shaped to mark their territory. But they aren't the only animal to use poop to mark their territory. My favorite one is the hippo. Did you know the hippo will swing its tail from side to side, make a poop and poop goes flying everywhere, Roberta? Let me get this straight. As the hippo begins to poop, its tail wags from side to side, and the scat sprays in all different directions? They can poop 32 feet away from themselves. That's 10 meters, Roberta. This scat spray gives me an idea for an art project. You. Come on, Dr. Z. I'm not thinking of using my own actual poop with paint and I just know the person to show us how. Today, we're going to create spray bottle silhouettes. Now, step one is to create our animals that we would like to be the silhouettes. Now, I've chosen sea creatures, but you can do any kind of animal you like. All you need to do is create the outline of each animal and then we'll cut them out. But if you don't want to draw them, ask an adult or you can get a stencil from online. 
The three animals that I've gone with are an octopus, a starfish, and a dolphin. Now the next step is to place your animals on top of your white cardboard. Figure out exactly where you would like them to go. A little tip I can offer is to grab some adhesive putty like blue tack and just pop a little bit under each animal so that when you spray, they don't lift up at the edges. All right, everything's all stuck down and ready for the next step. This is the best bit. Now to avoid a little bit of extra mess, just got some old paper here. Place everything down and get ready to spray. Now my first colour, I might go with blue. I might add some red. Just put the red on one side and then we can add some green to the other side. Very cool. Now it might be a little bit wet and a little bit soggy. So we're going to have to let that dry. Now once that's dry, you can peel off your silhouettes and your painting will be finished. There you have it, my underwater spray bottle silhouette painting is all dry and ready to be hung up on the wall. Olivia did a pretty amazing job bringing my scat spray creation to life. But I must say, in my artistic opinion, there was just one thing missing. It's so crazy you should mention glitter, Roberta. When I was at university, I did my advanced studies on glitter and poop. Yeah, right, Dr. Z. This I gotta hear. Well, glitter is a useful tool in analyzing poop. Ooh. Let's take a look. This is a midden. All right, yes, essentially that's a fancy name for a pile of poop. But this particular midden belongs to a herd of white rhino from Monato Safari Park in South Australia. White rhinos tend to drop their poo in the same pile as a way to mark their territory and communicate with one another. But this does present a problem when you want to know whose poo is whose. To firstly find out why poop identification is important and secondly, how the poop is traced back to its owner, we're catching up with Keeper Haiti, the rhino poop expert. When we're housing a group of females together, we sometimes want to track their hormonal cycles. We want to see if they're pregnant and we want to make sure just their general health is going really well. So if we're keeping them all together, their poo all looks the same on the ground when we come in in the morning and we want to make sure that we can tell each one's poo from the other. So Heidi and her team have come up with an ingenious way to figure out which rhino is responsible for which poop. And I bet you didn't think the answer would be glitter. So we're about to give our rhino females some glitter in hay just so that we can mark their faecal, so that we can identify each female's faeces from the others. And we'll use three different types of glitter. So we'll be using red, green and gold today. So I'll get some loosened hay, I'll make a little hole in the middle and I'll pour the glitter in. And then we'll hide it and then we'll pop it in their mouth. And then you can imagine what happens next. After a couple of days, the rhinos will start producing disco poo. And it's Heidi's job to analyse the midden. It goes through their system quite easily and it's really easy for us to find in poo. So when we come across their poo piles in the morning, we can open up a piece of poo and you can usually see it sparkling there. Keeper Heidi can then run tests on any of the faecal samples and determine the health of the herd or detect any signs of pregnancy hormones. The glitter is safe for the rhinos to consume and it's an effective, less invasive method to help monitor the herd. It's fine for their gut system because it doesn't get absorbed or go anywhere else. It pretty much just goes into their gut, mixes with all the other bits of hay that they've eaten and comes out the other end. I bet you'll never look at glitter the same after this. You know, Roberta, you're quite right. It's so much more fun when scat is disco scat. I also like that the wildlife care specialists use the rhino poop to understand more about the health of the animal. Roberta, I think you've come a long way since Phoebe had that moment on your head this morning. Hmm, it would appear so. But you know what? I can't really get on board with all this poop talk until we laugh about it. Are you ready for some dung o I mean darn good jokes, Dr. Z? The stage is all yours. Okay, here we go. Why was the fireman standing on poop? He was on duty! What's brown and sounds like a bell? Dung! What do you call 
a polar bear poop. A fudgesicle! A fudgesicle, Roberta? That's a great name for some poop. In fact, I've got some excellent names for poop right now. Did you know that a cow poop isn't always called a cow poop, Roberta? It's also known as a meadow muffin. Mmm. Ah. Vegan. Very dry. Simple horse poop isn't called horse poop, it's a road apple. Oh, it's golden poolicious. And bison poop, home on the range, isn't called bison poop, it's bison chips. Oh, salty, a little bit spicy. Dr. Z, is it weird that all this is making me a bit hungry? No, I understand, Roberta. We had fudgesicles, we had meadow muffins, we had road apples, we had bison chips. Oh my goodness, Dr. Z! What are you eating? It's edible poop with just a little bit of glitter, Roberta. It's delicious. It's the food of scatologists. In fact, we're going to teach you how to make this right now. Here's Chef Doolittle. Welcome, my friends. Chef Zulittle here, and today's tasty treat is not only delicious, it's disgusting. <laughs> Come, let me show you. We begin by melting one half cup of butter, that is to say, one cube of butter, in a medium saucepan over medium heat. And to that, we are going to add one half cup of milk, one third cup of cocoa powder, two cups of sugar, just a dash of salt. Now, we're going to crank up the heat on that. Now, you're going to want to bring this to a rolling boil and then back the heat down to medium. Keep it at a high simmer for about three to four minutes until you are sure that all of these sugars have melted completely. And I am ready for the next couple of ingredients. One half cup of peanut butter combined with one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Let's turn off the heat, make sure we get all of that yummy vanilla in there. And once that peanut butter is nice and melted as well, we are going to drizzle this right over our three cups of good old fashioned oats. Here we go, drizzling this right over our oats. Ooh, look at all the gooey goodness. If you would like to add some additional ingredients, you may. Raisins or perhaps dried blueberries would be lovely here. I am going to add some chopped nuts. I am particularly fond of these cashews, so those are going to go right in there as well. Let's get this all stirred up here. All right, let's throw our edible glitter in there too. Give that a bit more of a stir. We want to work with it while it is still warm, but right now it's just a little too hot to the touch, so I'm going to let it cool a little bit, and then we're going to come back and get our hands dirty. And I'm going to take my wet hands, and all the trick is to just shape it into whatever animal style of poo you wish. That one right there, that looks like a nice piece of dog poo, don't you think? And ooh, let's see, I want to just try an experiment with this one. Let's see if we can roll this out into something like a long snake shape. Marvelous. A bit skinnier, I think, though. There we go. There we go. We're going to make a nice coiled poop shape. Oh my goodness, that's marvelous. Well, just as I promised, my friends, a treat that is both disgusting and delicious. I hope you've had as much fun with this one as I've had. Thank you so much for joining us here at San Diego Zoo Kids Corner. I am Chef Zulittle. See you next time. Hang on a sec, Dr. Z. If there's edible glitter in our snacks, does that mean... Disco poop for everyone! Yeah, Roberta, disco poop! Woo! <laughs> oh, good! I was hoping that would be the case. Now, Roberta, you're getting caught up in the artistic side of poop. But remember, poop is a multidisciplinary subject. How so, Dr. Z? Well, we can use poop in mathematics. I'm not sure this is adding up to me. Well, it will, Roberta. 
And here to explain it to us is Professor Hutchinson. He's a manure mathematician. Thank you, Dr. Zulittle, and thank you for inviting me to talk to the students today about perfume, perfumeries, and flowers. Uh, I'm not here to talk about flowers and perfumery. Oh, uh, I'm here to talk about pollination of the flower. Uh, I'm not here to talk about pollination. I'm, I'm here to talk about what? About poop. You want me to talk about poop? Oh, okay. Uh, well, it's the math part of poop, apparently. Well, um, I do have a story problem for all of you out there. Uh, how come an elephant will eat 100 pounds of food every single day? 100 pounds of food, and yet an elephant will make 300 pounds of poop every single day. That's 100 in and uh, 300 out. Do you know how this works? Huh? Well, it's the 40 gallons of water that the elephant drinks that weighs down the, the food and makes the poop that much heavier. Now, it's always good to have the herbivore poop because we can recycle that into composted material. Carnivore poop, you can't do too much with it. So it's almost like a poop chain. The animals eat the plants, they make the poop. The poop goes to fertilize the plants, the plants grow. The animals eat the plants, the plants make the poop. Uh, think about the, the poop chain. But now, people always say, Professor Hutchinson, how much poop does the San Diego Zoo and San Diego Zoo Safari Park make every single day? Well, that would be 11 tons of poop every single day. That's a whole lot of poop. Now, let's see how many pounds of poop that is. If, if one ton of poop equals 2,000 pounds, and we've got 11 tons of poop every day, we take 11 times that by 2,000. What does that give us, boys and girls? Do your math, do your math. It's 22,000 pounds of poop every single day. That's the weight of your school bus in poop every single day. And now, from the largest poop in the animal kingdom to the smallest, the insect poop. And you don't need a microscope to see this poop. You don't realize it's poop, but if you look in your windowsills, on your car windows, on leaves, on the grass, you're going to see what's called frass, F-R-A-S-S. -S. That is insect poop. And you can see it everywhere. Take a picture of that and send it to me at zmail at sandiegozoo.org. So keep looking for that frass, take those pictures and send it to me, Professor Hutchinson. I have got a math problem for you. I started with three edible poops. I've got one left. Do you know what that means? Oh, Dr. Z. You didn't eat all the snacks again, did you? No, Roberta, I started with three. I've got one left. That means I ate two. Semantics, Dr. Z. Now, just asking for a friend here, but do you think we have unearthed enough scat facts for me to possibly take an entry-level poopologist exam? I'll tell you what, let's play our final game together, Roberta. I'm going to tell you the name of the poop, and you're going to tell me which animal makes this poop. Are you ready, Roberta? Okay, let's do do it. Our first poop is guano. Hmm, okay, uh, a crocodile? No, a panther? Uh, no, a whale. All good guesses, Roberta, but guano is made by birds, bats, and seals. Birds, bats? And seals. Okay, got it. Go again. Okay, do you know which animal makes dung midden? Oh, I know this one. From the video we watched earlier, large herbivores make dung middens to mark their territories, like rhinos and hippos. Absolutely correct, Roberta. Good job. Okay, our final one is frass, Roberta. F-R-A-S-S, -S, frass. Oh, well, I was certainly paying attention to Professor Hutchinson, so I've got this one. Frass is insect poop. Insect poop is correct, Roberta. Well, I'll definitely be adding those little knowledge nuggets to my poop memory pile. Wow, Roberta, I will always remember this experience with you. I am proud to have been your manure mentor. I must admit, you've opened my eyes to a whole new world, Dr. Z, that's for sure. What started out as a messy exchange turned into an unexpected opportunity to learn about one of nature's most versatile and underappreciated resources, poop. There's so many different uses for poop. Some animals might use it for camouflage or to mark their territory or to enhance their features. And don't forget 
the wildlife care specialist, use the poop to analyze the animals, to see what they're eating, if they're healthy, to get their DNA. They don't have to disturb the animal, they just analyze the poop, keeping everyone healthy. Oh, let's ask our friends what their favorite part of the show was today. My favorite discovery was the sparkly method that wildlife care specialists use to figure out whose poop is whose in their rhino herd. Add a little edible glitter to some hay, watch it come out the other end, and voila, disco poop. You know, Roberta, you have become the number one fan of poop. Or should I say, number two? I wouldn't go that far, Dr. Z, but yes, I'm definitely more intrigued. Well, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. We had a great time with you, and we hope you had a great time too. Remember, if you've got any jokes, stories, questions, poems, or pictures that you want to send us, send them to zmail at sandiegozoo.org. Get an adult to help you. And if we use your joke, your question, your story, your poem on the air, we'll mention your name. Oh, and Professor Hutchinson wanted you to please send him pictures of frass. You can send them to the same place, zmail at sandiegozoo.org. See, zebra and zoo little. In the meantime, everyone, keep asking those questions. See you soon. Phoebe, gross! Stay curious, my friend.